Today's version of Men Are Terrible Reckless Leaders, let's talk about Hollywood. Because those men are like the worst of the bad leadership that comes with men. <laughs> Not all men, hashtag, but most. Because to be a good leader, and y'all know I talk about this and having worked in the outdoor industry for a really long time and how reckless those men are, to be a good leader, you have to be confident, not cocky. You have to be empathetic and thoughtful and understanding the needs of everyone around you. Who does that sound like? Not many men I know. You have to be able to anticipate danger, crisis, the needs of everybody, the emotional needs of everybody. Who, who does that remind you of? Not dad. These men can't even lead in their own homes. You think they're going to lead a whole crew? So let's get into how dangerous Hollywood is and why. It's because it's run by men. Now, I'm not saying that women don't also sometimes make terrible leaders. And it's usually the women who are trying to be the cool girl and trying to act like men. Uh, it doesn't go well for us. Stop doing it. I know it's a survival mechanism and I know sometimes you kind of don't have a choice, but we do not want to be like them. Okay? Because they get us and other people, including other men, killed. What got me thinking about this today? Although I think about it a lot. If you've been seeing my Rust series and how much Alec Baldwin is a tool. I hope he's guilty and goes to jail. This came across my feed today. Remember her? Ted Lasso, Game of Thrones. Look at this! Why, my understanding, Game of Thrones was one of the most dangerous sets ever. And as one of my mutual says, I hope I remember to tag her. They're, they just like gave all these men who don't know what they're doing a ton of money. And they're like, I want this, I want this, I want real dragon-like stuff. Well, guess what? Just because these men have these imaginations and they want to see things looking real doesn't mean that you should endanger people. Because no man's creativity is that important. Their ideas are not that great. Uh, Hannah Waddington was on The Late Show. She's talking about a uh, scene where they literally waterboarded her. You know, what they are, I, I'm pretty sure they're not allowed to do that. Like, with, with international law, maybe. What? Who respects that, though? I mean, look what's happening. But, you know, they want to make it look real. So, these men, these directors, it's not always men, but it's usually men, usually white men, are like, yeah, I want it to be so real. Let's just basically waterboard her without technically waterboarder, but waterboarder. And what did it do? It gave her chronic claustrophobia. I'm gonna get into so many examples in a minute, but I just wanna go into this because this is uh, happening right now, being talked about right now. And I think more actors should talk about how much these directors torture them because they should not be able to just have a blank check in terms of uh, em endangering people, their emotional and physical safety on set. And that includes the crew as a former crew member myself. It was horrific. 10 hours of being actually waterboarded. Like, actually. Okay? So even though this is illegal, they were like, yeah, we went to look real. I'm strapped to a table with all these leather straps. I couldn't lift up my head because I said that would be too obvious That's that it's loose. You know, you gotta make it look real. I'm on my way back from set with grape juice all in my hair and it went purple. I couldn't speak because the mountain had his hand over my mouth while I was screaming and I had strap marks everywhere like I'd been attacked. One of our other guys who'd been shooting uh, something else was like, you're lucky I've just been crawling through on my elbows for four days. It kind of doesn't matter when you're in Game of Thrones. You just give your... Look at this. When she said, she saw, talked about this back in 2021 with Collider and she said, filming that waterboarding scene was second only to childbirth as it was the worst day of her life. Her childbirth is literally the most dangerous thing a woman can do. And the more marginalized, the more dangerous. And she said this next to childbirth was like the most worst day of her life. Uh, so 10 hours in straps. Lena was uncomfortable pouring liquid on my face for that long. And I was beside myself. But in these moments, you have to think, do you serve the peace and get on with it? Or do you chicken out and go, nah, this isn't what I signed up for, blah, blah, blah. I want more of the nah, this isn't what I signed up for, blah, blah, blah. Because I'm sorry, no job is worth being having a claustrophobia for the rest of your life. No job is worth dying over. And yet these men will literally just be like, no, 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 we need the shot. Let's get the shot. We got to get the shot. That's what these guys say all the time on set. And it's like, how important is this dumb scene? And half the time, these scenes that they work so hard for get cut out anyway. There's nothing worse than working so hard on a scene. I was in props and set dressing among other roles, but that was what they did a lot. And just being like, wow, we spent all that time, all that money, all that effort, and even put ourselves in danger for this scene that didn't even make it in the movie. 
according to Waterham, she could barely speak after that day of filming because she had been screaming through the mountain's hand, which is quite frightening as a singer to completely lose your voice. I had no voice at all. Ah! I didn't read that part before. Even Lena was, uh, am I saying her name right? I hope so. Discussed that the, how horrendous she remembered that being for Hannah. Someone else asked me about that the other day and I was like, you know, as actors, we all have boundaries. We have, we all have boundaries or no boundaries, Lena. And no boundaries are obviously very thrilling when you can go to a place, but something like that, when you're tired, when you're tied down during filming for 10 hours, it made me feel horrendous doing that scene with her. We know um, that in general, especially in hierarchical uh, environments, which the film industry is very much hierarchical. And I've, I've heard, I, you know, a lot of people that I worked with on set had actually been in the military and they're like, yeah, this is so familiar. The way they run sets is very familiar to the military. There's the big boss and that big boss sets the tone for everything, right? So if big daddy is abusive, guess what happens in that little dysfunctional family? Everyone gets abused. People are triangulated. People are under stress. People are so under stress, especially if the leader sucks and is scary, like Alec Baldwin, that they don't do their jobs well because that creates an environment at work of fear, tension. No one wants to speak up when things feel a little too uh, dangerous. And when you have a bully for a boss, how easy is it for you to be like, this isn't safe? Because one thing they'll do in Hollywood real fast is if you are difficult, you will never work again. You will get blacklisted. Everything is word of mouth. So if you are the whistleblower on a production, you may never work again. You lose your whole career possibly. Why do you think people don't talk? And they want that culture of silence. The same way patriarchy, white supremacy culture, capitalism, all the bad shit uh, relies on silence silencing the people that it is har harming most, creating an environment where they can't speak up and advocate for themselves, right? Look what just happened to Boeing. They literally, there's no way that man unalived himself. Like, anyway, it's all connected. You know what I mean? See the same stuff everywhere. And the military, from what I understand, is even way worse than the film industry. I can't imagine what it's like, especially for women or anyone in the LGBTQ plus community in the military. I, I don't know how y'all do it. Now, just to be clear, it's not always women who make environments unsafe. I definitely remember having a production manager on a commercial that I worked on where I was like, this woman is like a cool girl. Like she loves all of her, the PAs were all men except for me. And I just remember being like, wow, <laughs> she, like this feels like worse than working for a man because a woman who is trying to act like a man is sometimes more dangerous than the men themselves because a woman has more to prove. She's got more at stake. She has to prove herself as being just as vicious and cutthroat as, you know, she was the one who, if we worked a double day, she would not, she would not fight for a double day. We went over 16 hours, stuff like that. So I learned really quickly, like, I just not assume that a woman boss is always going to be better. Because look at this, Aubrey Plaza. This is a female director that did this to her. She showed up on set one day, supposed to prove herself in a scene. She assumed that it was a close up on her face and that it wouldn't actually show her doing it. And then the director was like, no, it's in the script. You, mm. When she showed up, there was a, the camera mounted on the ceiling. So it's going to be a, 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 like a wide shot of her entire body. And I, was, and I was in my underwear and a Clinton t-shirt and there was a bunch of old men smoking, you know, the crew guys. So for people who are not familiar with, with film set, you know, this is why they have um, intimacy coordinators now. Because they're now starting to realize, well, maybe this is traumatizing. Because of, you know, people like James Franco and all those predators literally had women doing crazy stuff. Or Marlon Brando. Uh, what is it? Last Tango in Paris or whatever. Someone correct me. Where they literally um, had the, the, the actress graped with butter or some crap. Whatever. I gotta look it up. I don't have time because I'm too, there's too much to go over in this video already. Doing all that kind of stuff. There's a reason why they have like a closed set. Because actors are really uncomfortable doing something, especially not even faking pleasuring yourself, literally pleasuring yourself. I don't want to do that in front of a whole crew of old men, old and young, but you know, a lot, most of the crew, especially if it's a union job, it's going to be older men. Because young people can't get into the union for a while. While independent films tend to be a little bit scarier because they don't have the protection of union, if you get someone like Bradley Cooper on there, who's ableist, 
I'm gonna torture the crew anyway. No chair. Honestly, nothing pleased me more than Bradley Cooper not getting any awards as a director for Maestro. Like, I'm sorry, that is karma for not letting your crew sit in chairs. And I've talked about this before. I have chronic back problems. And I don't think it's from all those years as a raft guide and doing this and hit lifting him. I think it's from years standing on set because you just stand. Standing, and I've talked about this before, standing without moving. Ask bouncers, ask people who uh, work um, retail. Ask when I worked at Piggly Wiggly, you know this one? I worked at Piggly Wiggly when I was a teenager. Standing. In Europe, they at least let them sit. So many of these standing jobs are so hard on your body. And Bradley Cooper's like, no, you people just don't, you got time to lean, you got time to clean. Like we're literally bored out of our mind. He's like, no, you can't sit. But he's not the only one. He wants to be a little baby Christopher Nolan. Christopher doesn't like chairs or cell phone. Cause God forbid any parents might need to be able to take, or anybody, any kind of caregiver, or I don't know, just anyone with any of their own health issues or whatever. No, he doesn't like that. Mind you, the reason why he doesn't have a cell phone is because his wife, this amazing woman who produces all of his stuff, that's why she does all the acceptance speeches, by the way. Yeah, whenever they win, like best picture, she is the only reason why this man is successful. And guess who answers all of his emails and all of his phone stuff? Her. So yeah, it's real easy if you have a woman producing your life and your movie. That's what women are, we're producers. These directors wouldn't be able to do anything without the producer. But he gets all the credit as being a genius, right? He only has success because of her. And she's also raising his like four kids or however many there are, three or four. But you know, he's like, I'm it's distracting, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna repeat all this crap, I've already gone over. But he's such a genius, right? Such a genius, he can't write one single woman character who has any depth. He has a dead wife, uh, dead ref refrigerating, whatever that term is called. All the women in his movies suck. So, sorry, genius, you can't write women. But I like Matthew McConaughey. Nolan is a magnificent problem solver. Anne Hathaway, who recently just said this man saved her career, and I appreciate her saying that because she's right. They, they, everyone hated her. I think it was what, the Oscars or Golden Globes? They just turned on her and nobody would go anywhere near her. So I love that she's talking about it. I'm glad that she has a career again. And yes, thank you Christopher Nolan for doing this, bringing her career back. But he also put her in danger all the time while filming. There's some ice storm when they're in the, uh, on a glacier. They shut down filming and Nolan's like, I don't think it's so bad. As raw chunks of all asphalts were being torn off the road in front of them. Why do we trust men's judgment for literally anything? They're terrible as outdoor leaders. They're terrible as creative leaders. They're terrible leaders in general because they're selfish. And until they learn how to have emotional intelligence and be thoughtful of the needs uh, and possible wants, especially emotional needs and the safety of other people, which men just are terrible at because I mean, look what they do with their own children. Why do we keep giving them money to do this? They're not geniuses. Women just haven't had a chance to show what geniuses we are because these dudes hoard all the money. Now, she was so afraid to, no, 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 it's not that they're not safe, because she knows you can't badmouth Christopher Nolan. So then there's this little anecdote, I'm not gonna go into it. Pause if you wanna read. But any interview where he talks about why he doesn't allow phones on set, <sighs> drive me crazy. So they keep giving men like this money to direct things. Men like this, I've gone over this man before. Christo Christopher Nolan is the only reason why this man has a career. He keeps you know, trying to soft launch Casey Affleck, who literally tortured. Okay, I'm, I can't go into that case. I already talked about it. Let me know if you want me to do that one again. But this man literally assaulted women, even like producers. Nightmare, nightmare. But Christopher Nolan will still hire him. Why not? Boys will be boys. And if it's not the director themselves, it is like the Jeremy Strongs. I really love um, Jesse Armstrong. I don't know him, maybe he's a terrible person, but every interview I've seen with him, I was like, now that man sounds like a good leader. Does, he, he seems very humble, but confident and all those things. And then he has to wrangle people like Jeremy Strong. He's like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a method actor, okay? I'm different. And he literally put his own life in danger and, and the crew's life in danger by thinking he knew the ending of the succession uh, series better than the actual creator writer he was like no no i think i think my character would die by jumping in the river bro like he really pissed jesse off on this i hope i hope uh other directors consider this move was so selfish and so reckless and this man is a danger to the entire crew by doing crap like this nothing against jeremy strong but i hate method actors and this is one reason why the other thing that these 
pricks can't seem to remember is that the directors and like the big the big above the line people they're only on set two or three months every year the crew is on set all year they do one big movie or one big show and then they jump they we're, we're freelancers so even though you know we may have a little time off between things crew are on set all year long bradley cooper wants them to sit on this apple boxes and as this commenter said in my comment zone mm -hmm. Those apple boxes that uh, Bradley Cooper wants everyone to sit on, we, they need those. The grips and electrics need those. Props, set dressers need those. They're not chairs. And just to summarize this before I go into some very scary details, I, I, I love this tweet. Hollywood is due for a reckoning on the unhealthy work practices. It's being, it's, it being standard to regularly work over 12 hours. The expectation that the crew should stand all day. The amount of ADs, that's an um, assistant director, who have had heart attacks by the age of 50. You shouldn't have to destroy your body to make a movie. And I'd add, you shouldn't have to destroy your, mod your body to make a movie for some genius whose ideas are like not even that great. And who's going to be making all the money from that and taking all the credit and stepping on the bodies of all these people while doing it. Some of those bodies actually dead bodies like Alec and others. And this one last tweet. People treat movie making like it's a special op mission to thwart a terrorist attack. Es expecting everyone to treat it like it's the most important thing in their lives. This is absolutely the mentality in Hollywood. It's ridiculous considering how much this is just a job so much uh, to so much of the crew. You know, I'm a writer and so I understand like, like creating for a living, but I'm so glad I worked on set, especially. Even if I hadn't, I think just being raised as a woman, I would be aware of the impact on other people, but maybe not. Maybe, I, you know, Miss Cold Dead Heart would not consider that. But as a crew member, seeing what they go through, you know, this is a job. No, none of these crew care about your stupid little movie. It's usually bad anyway. And apparently it's, you know, a lot of these dudes. The Darren Aronofsky's and all these, it's always men. And by the way, men, these geniuses like Nolan, put their crew puts his crew in danger because he doesn't want to use a uh, you know special effects and stuff this one uh this one dude was like our vfx shot count is probably lower than most romantic comedies and given what christopher nolan does in his movies that is insane to me but you know he's also doesn't care about the environment either remember that corn scene in instellar remind me to do a, a movie review of instellar i watched that with uh anthony and we both were like oh my god this is like this is the exact type of man uh, that I talk about all the time. All these characters, all these men are the same. King babies. The hero is actually a selfish prick and a terrible dad. But Christopher Nolan's like, I want real corn. I want real corn. So he plants 500 acres of corn. Planted a $100,000 cornfield for that stupid shot of the truck going through the corn. He'll blow up buildings. He'll blow up airplanes. He'll literally traumatize a town that was traumatized already once in New Mexico. With the nuclear bomb, I want a real bomb. It's not just putting your entire crew uh, and, and cast in danger. These creative geniuses literally destroy communities when they come in and make this crap. I have, I have a soft spot for uh, New Mexico, which is one of the poorest states in the country. And he's like, I want to make a movie that I want to do that. I want a bomb. I've done enough on Helena Hutchinson from Rust. Very few women make it to this. Very few women are cinematographers or DPs, director of photography. Uh, and then and because of Alec Baldwin and his recklessness and bullying everyone on set, she's dead. Which reminds me of, of, of Sarah. I still owe y'all a whole, this, this story deserves a whole video. Uh, so I'm just going to summarize it in a couple clips. Run over by a train because the uh, producers were like, no, nah, but like they ignored the rules. They were warned. They wanted to get the shot, get the shot, get the shot. That story is, is so awful. I, again, I can't go into it now, but the, even like the actors on it were like, this is so messed up. Even the dude that this was about, one of the Almond Brothers, was like, please stop making this. The, just like Rust, after they have this terrible thing, they're like, but I need to make this movie. They won't just walk away. Like... <sighs> The audacity to be like, no, I mean, I killed a woman who was going to be a cinematographer. who's was in the camera department. Ended her life because I broke the rules and was selfish and greedy. But I just, I have to keep making the film. God, get over yourself. Literally, the man who it was about was like, stop, stop. But just like they do with their families and in their communities, these men who were really bought into patriarchy and won't unpack that entitlement will make anyone into a sacrificial lamb to get what they want, when they want it, how they want it. They don't care. How is that a good leader? And they'll face no consequences either. Most of these men will never go to jail. There's tons of articles on this, by the way. It would take me like 
20 hours to go through all the injuries because of men in Hollywood. But I'm gonna go through just the Wikipedia page that just summarizes them like in little bitty paragraphs. Mind you, behind each paragraph is like lives destroyed or literally lost. Let's just do a quick recap. In Wikipedia, they broke it down by like decades. Look at this. In the 70s, they go, oh, uh, in the last line, sound technician, James Chapman, mauled to death by a lion. Whatever this movie is, never heard of it. Jodie Foster's first movie, look at this. Debut as a young child, mauled by a lion on set. Why do they have so many lions? This event has since caused her to suffer from, uh, I don't know what that means. It's some sort of phobia and I can't click on that link right now. But just like Hannah, lifelong damage because of recklessness of whoever's running that set. So there's just like so many I'm not gonna go up. The Exorcist, spinal fracture that led to scoliosis. Remember Carrie? I don't know if you've seen it, but that's the one, I think it's the same one, where they literally drop a bunch of blood on this girl. The actress who played Nora ended up with ruptured eardrum after pressurized water from a ho hose sprayed her directly in the rear, in the ear, during the filming of the prom scene. But look at that, how respectful. Oh, it's such a good shot, I'm just gonna leave it in the movie. This is what they do. I think they do this crap on purpose, and even if they don't, they should have taken this out. I'd be pissed if I was her. Look at this, remember Grease? They were filming in a gym, and it was so hot in there, and they did not think about the safety of the cast or crew. Heat-related illness, another injury from that movie, got one person on opioid because he injured his back. Look at this, the Duke's a hazard. I loved that as a kid. Assistant cameraman was killed and eight other members injured when a tra camera truck flipped while rehearsing a chase scene. Never heard of that. I'm going over these because I've never heard of most of these. Whenever I do uh, stuff like this, people mention the Twilight Zone and the helicopter thing. Go look at this page, it is horrifying. Magnum PI, a uh, cameraman killed in a helicopter crash while filming an episode. Another camera assistant. God, what is it with the camera? The camera department. Yeah, you know, I always thought the grips and electrics were the most in danger. The camera gets a lot of injuries too. Killed when struck by a driverless stunt car during the filming. Okay, now y'all remember I was talking about Dakota and you know, the my Nepo baby thing recently. I, I owe you a video on the birds. But just so you know, uh, Dakota's mom and her grandma were involved with this nightmare called Roar. Guess whose idea this was? Daddy. Look at this. Over 70 people injured on set. Cinematographer had his scalp lifted by a lion, resulting in 220 stitches. Tippy, Dakota Johnson's uh, grandma, who had already been tortured on the birds by Alfred stupid Hitchcock, ah, that guy's terrible, fractured her leg and, all, and also had a scalp wound after being bucked off an elephant, in addition to being bitten in the neck by a lion. <laughs> They require that 38 stitches. You know what? This is the perfect example of men being terrible, reckless leaders as fathers and in film together, all in one. Even he puts his own daughter at risk. So mom gets bitten by a lion and falls off an elephant. Daughter was also attacked, receiving 50 stitches on her face. Who puts their whole family in a movie with lions where you live with the lion? Okay, this deserves a whole video. It's so insane. Uh, it was so many injuries. People were like, the turnover was so big. They were like, no, no. So here's the Twilight Zone one where the uh, helicopter spun out of control with two children in it, a six-year-old and a seven-year-old. In addition to actor Vic Morrow were killed by helicopter in production with a, it struck a tail ro rotor, causing the helicopter to spin out of control. Okay, I can't even read this. This sounds terrifying. Pause if you want to read this whole story. I did not know this, y'all. Pepsi. Pepsi commercial in 1984 where Michael Jackson was uh, filming a television commercial with his siblings in LA. A faulty uh, pyrotechnic, maybe I did remember this, but I, I, did, I forgot. Went off too early and set his hair on fire, inflicting second and third degree burns to his scalp and body. Um, by the way, I've actually had second degree burn 
I can't imagine what third degree burns are like, but it's secondary burn because I, uh, was it Girl Scout camp and someone s s spilled hot cocoa on me? For months, I had to go to the doctor and have the most painful thing where they were removing skin. It was awful. It was awful. I still have like kind of a, a, a permanent scar. That was second degree. Imagine that happening to your head. Jackson and Pepe, Pepsi uh, sued them for damages. He only received 1.5 million. That's ridiculous. Which he donated to establish the Michael Jackson Burn Center. But look at this. The act, I'm sure, maybe I'm the last to know about this. But I had no idea that this was tied to this incident. This accident resulted in Jackson's addiction to painkillers and obsession with plastic surgery until his death in 2009. I did not know that. I wish I had known that. Anyway, that's uh, Rocky IV. This is the method acting thing. This is more like, hey, Sylvester Stallone, maybe you should chill. He's like, I want to have a real fight. I want it to look real. Was this like the Russian? <laughs> God, was that the most Cold, World pro Cold War propaganda? I swear to God, spies like us, Rocky IV. As a kid, I was like, Russia, the USSR sucks. They're evil. Little did I know that we are like the villain in every country story usually, including now. But look at this! He was airlifted because of these injuries. Top Gun, ever heard about this? Another Cold War propaganda. <laughs> One of the aerobatic pilots crashed his camera plane off of Southern Island. Neither the aircraft nor the bodies were ever recovered. Die Hard, it left Bruce Willis uh, two thirds, uh, he lost his permanently two thirds of his hearing. Red Heat, it had Arnold Schwarzenegger and this other dude fighting in snow, near naked. And to try to protect them, this Oh my God. Oh my God. I didn't realize this, but the stuntman and the director suffered a fatal heart attack while filming this fight scene in freezing condition. No stupid movie is worth all this. See, it's not even that these men are bad leaders in terms of getting everyone else unalived. They are, they are like a danger to themselves. Just to call back to my video earlier about men wanting everyone to save them from themselves. Stop letting them make movies. They clearly have a death wish. The Abyss, oh, I loved that movie. Ed Harris almost drowned during an underwater sequence, despite him yelling cut when he ran out of air. The production crew did not give him uh, oxygen until he passed out. The trauma caused him to break down in his car on the way home. See, that's the thing. Even if these accidents don't actually hurt you on set, the way that they treat the crew makes them have a car accidents and all kinds of terrible things happen to them after they get off the job. And a lot of them end up being full-blown addicts to deal with the trauma of this line of work. Look at this, the Karate Kid, part three. Internal bleeding after tw doing 20 takes of being thrown out a door and landing on his stomach. Again, this this is the actor, not even the stuntman. So I, I also want, I, I'm bringing up the crew too, because it's usually like only the, the actors and the famous people who make the headlines. But I just want people to know these crews are huge and these are usually like working class people. I mean, it depends. Sometimes you can make really good money on set, but usually only if you're in the union. But when you break it down by the hour and the toll it takes on your body, it's really not worth it a lot of time. And they know that people, a lot of people want so badly to be in the creative arts that they will do this stuff, hopes of making it up one day, um, and then have heart attacks at 50. But I wanna highlight that it's not just, like this, at least the stunt people get unalive more than anyone, and you could argue that they know going into it that that's a possibility. Sure, maybe, but no stunt is worth someone dying. But even the actors, even the actors get killed. And the crew, we never hear about the crew or the stuntman. It's only usually the famous people. Look at this. Back to the Future Part 3. In the, oh my God. In the scene where uh, Buford, Mad Dog, Tannen, and his gang hang Marty McFly, Michael J. Fox lost con consciousness from asphyxiation. After a few seconds, an extra realized that he was being asphyxiated and the noose was lower. And you know what? Other than PAs, and crafty extras are treated the worst even like crafty makes fun of extras they are actually below pas it's really weird i swear this stuff is just like the military uh, and i understand because extras can be very annoying okay especially as crafty because they come to my table and they would just take all the food that i'm supposed to feed the entire crew with but they're not getting paid much so i understood why but it was just like oh this whole environment is so toxic sometimes terminator 2 linda hamilton suffered a permanent hearing damage in one ear during the filming when the one pew pew went off into elevator inside elevator when, uh, whatever elevator without her using earplugs Some other stuff happened on the bodyguard? Oh, we love that movie, right? A worker died when he was crushed between two lighting equipment cranes during filming. 
I don't remember hearing about that. You know, that's again, much like women are martyrs all the time. Women are just like, no one even mentions how many women die at the hands of men. People on crew get treated like women do in the home. You know what I mean? Women and children. If daddy is toxic and the industry itself is run by toxic abusive predator, then everyone under those people suffer, including men, just like in the military. Uncle Sam is the abusive daddy. The crow, you know what happened there? That's where Brandon Lee died. Actually, I should probably do a whole video on that because that story is so unbelievably tragic. Look at him right now. <sighs> Look at the side eyes he's giving y'all. Ah! He's like, I really want to go outside now. Water World. Remember how Kevin, Kevin Costner was like, thought he could save, remember like the BP thing? And he was like, I did Water World. I can say, like, that was so ridiculous. Anyway, Kevin Costner nearly died when he got caught in a squall while tied to the mast of his tremor. I don't know how to say that word. In addition, several cast and crew members suffered, suffered from scenic sickness and jellyfish stings. What a nightmare. These, this actress, uh, these actresses were thrown overboard. Nearly a dozen rescue divers jumped in about like what what are y'all doing? I swear to God, I swear to God. This like we gotta get the shot. We gotta get the shot. Oh this is like Hollywood, it's I'm not saying Hollywood is necessarily any worse than other industries. This is just like capitalism. Especially capitalism in the US. But Hollywood is almost like an exaggerated version of what you find across industries. It's probably exactly the same or even worse in military and in politics. I mean, come on, Ugh, don't we start it. I Hillary Clinton's interview the other day. The perfect reminder of women who um, do men's dirty work, thus being just as bad as them. Titanic, Kate Winslet. Hypothermic, almost drowned at one point. Uh, uh, this is not necessarily because James Cameron was um, uh, reckless. It sounded like real accidents, but also he sounds reckless. The dude keeps going down and looking at that stupid boat. He's been down there more than the dudes who, with the thing, the, the, the one that, that exploded with those billionaires. And that daddy who brought his kid on there. Oh, uh, don't get me started on that. That story still makes me so mad. X-Files, a crew member was killed by uh, electrocution when the scaffolding he was standing on came into contact with a high tension power line. God, six other crew members were injured in the accident, one critically. Kill Bill, oh, don't get me started on them. I cannot stand the OG Inchmel. This forker, Tarantino. I actually wrote about this incident for Glamour. It was one of my first articles out of, I don't know, like almost 20 for them. Because after what he put em, uh, I almost called her Emma, Uma Thurman, what he put her through, that is, um, I, go if you want to read that story or just read her story in general. That is a classic example of what all these men are doing. You know, here they're just like, well, while filming the driving scene, uh, she sustained a concussion and injured her knees when lost control of the car that crashed. And that, like, that's that's not what happened. What happened is that bully assured her it was safe. He gaslit her. He pressured her. And she finally gave in and then almost died. That's what all these men are doing. Passion of the Christ? Shocker, something happened on that set. This, oh, God. Sustained gashes to his back from multiple whippings. Hyperthermia and <laughs> separated shoulder from carrying the giant cross. Okay, that's kind of funny. Uh, I mean, Mel Gibson was running this show, right? M who's surprised? Fork that dude and the endless chances that he gives to uh, Shia and all these other dudes. Robert Downey Jr. Phantom of the Opera? Almost drowned. <sighs> Lone Ranger? Crew member drowned while trying to clean a 24 deep water tank to be used in the film's underworld. Now you see me? Nearly drowned. When her shackles got... I'm, I'm going so fast here. When her sha sha shackles got stuck in the grate below and she was st ugh, stuck in the chamber for over two God! Look at this. Cops? While filming a shooting incident in Wendy's in Omaha, Nebraska, audio technician Brian Young was accidentally shot by the Omaha Police Department. A cab. He and the suspect were pronounced... Oh, God. You can't reform that. And then, of course, Midnight Rider, the story that I'm going to do. I'm going to do a whole video on her. And uh, Sarah, this is the Sarah Jones, the camera assistant. Walking Dead, head injury from a stunt, uh, stunt man after falling more than 20 feet. He died the following day. I just can't imagine being on these sets. I've never dealt with a death on set, but I just think of the, 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 the cast, the crew, and the trauma of witnessing that. And then having, you just have to keep working. You just keep going. Okay, you know what? I actually have experienced something kind of like that because in my first day on the river, someone died and then we had to do another trip. We had to keep doing the trip that someone died. We literally were on the side of the river doing this chest compressions to a private person that we came across and then they died and we just had to keep 
rafting like so i guess i can relate to this scenario but just not on a film set and if you're like working a hospital or environment where like that's normal or even the military this is film and like that tweet I, I quoted earlier, this is not like fighting terrorists or whatever, even though terrorists is usually, we're usually the terrorists, honestly. It, it, it's just making heart. But the way men run this stuff, they treat it like it's the most important thing in the world. That's because they are so ego driven and put their own selfish desire and money and fame above the lives of hundreds of people and the families of those people. Because if you get hurt, on set, I promise you, whatever workers comp you're gonna get is not gonna compensate that entire family that's relying on that person's income. Deadpool, who? Someone died on a motorcycle. A beautiful day in the neighborhood, the sound mixer suffered a heart attack and fell from the apartment ugh, balcony. I know that's a heart attack, but still, it's just a reminder that they put us in some of the craziest positions in general, right? A lot of times with no security or anything like that. Like what kind of balcony do you just fall off of unless they have you in a weird position? Batwoman in 2020, production assistant, oh, a PA, a female PA too. She probably already was treated like crap because she was a PA and a woman, like double whammy. Paralyzed from the waist down by a bucket lift while filming in Vancouver, what? And then there's of course all the times that Halle Berry has been, been injured. One of which times, back to my, you know, you all know how I feel about Robert Downey Jr. Uh, he accidentally broke her arm and then he never really apologized for that. Like he did, but it was such a non-apology. And I love that she has not forgiven him for that. Um, especially when someone is trying to blow it off and being like, get over it. You definitely don't deserve uh, a I forgive you. But you know what? Halle Berry gets hurt on set all the time. And the way they frame it is like, what's wrong with Halle Berry? Um, I'm sorry, but my first question knowing A, she's a woman, B, she's a black woman, Maybe we should be asking, why does she keep getting hurt on in these environments? Is you really think it's her? Or could it be the fact that men in general do not respect the lives of women and just other people, but misogynoir makes that even worse? I don't know, just a guess. And by the way, waterboarding is classified as torture. All nations that are signatories in the United Nations Conventions Against Torture have agreed that this is torture. But there should be no surprise that the United States plays by different rules and is usually the only person against things that protect people or entire regions from genocide. You will never ever convince me that men are better leaders than women. Maybe a few men are good leaders. I've known some of those men. But in general, it is women who save other people when someone's in danger. Ask any domestic violence survivor or any woman in public spaces. It's women that save her, that look out for her. It's almost never men. Women are, have been forced to look out for everyone for a long time. And men, because of their entitlement and selfishness under patriarchy, get a blank check to do whatever they do, whatever they want, whatever their little ego, ego desire. And then everyone else is a sacrificial lamb to that man's wants and needs. It's, it's literally what happens in the home is a microcosm of what happens at work and what happens in the country by the government and what happens globally. These douchebags who are leading the world suck. Okay? And women who center men and women who won't do that hard work also suck at leadership. But I am gonna leave you with a little hope. I just saw this today. Kristen Dunst has been on a amazing press tour and that someone posted this uh, interview. She was hanging out with a bunch of women in Hollywood, actresses. I highly encourage you to go watch this, but I'm pretty sure because of copyright reasons, I can't actually play it. But what she says is that she has created these opportunities to work with women directors. She seeks them out. She's friends with mostly women. And so she makes those opportunities for women. She's willing to take chances with women. She picks her roles a lot of times based on who's making it. She's not the only one. Under that tweet, uh, this person said, Kidman told Variety that she's made a private pact with herself to work at least uh, with at least one woman director every 18 months. In classic overachiever fashion, she's exceeded that goal. Men are never gonna just create opportunities for us. They're never just gonna like get, give away all their power. So part of decentering men is not just in your personal life, it's at work too. It's taking chances, 
trusting women to do the job, seeking out women to do the job, giving women the more benefits of the doubt than you would ever, than would normally, than you would normally extend to men. Because we just assume, and I, I literally catch myself in this a lot, okay? I don't know if this is ever going to go away. But my default, unfortunately, is still to be like, oh, it must be good because it's a man. And then I go, oh my God, what are you thinking, Melanie? Oh, silly, silly Melanie. So now I have slowly been trying to retrain my brain to be like, you know what? If it's from a man, it's probably mediocre until proven otherwise. I give women the benefits of the doubt and assume that their default is amazing until they prove me otherwise. And I suggest other women get on board with that because just like men, we can't make men change in terms of the, the dating world. We can't make them change in the work world. What we can do is to make focus on ourselves and our actions and how we can be more intentional with our decision and how that empowers other women. Fems.